this is a format that's going to become increasingly important. Now, um, you can read a Shakespeare play or you can read um, um, a novel on your phone if you want to. I don't find it to be a particularly um, good uh, format for doing that. Uh, but it's clear that the phone has become what um, people, some uh, experts call a lean forward technology, something that you consult um, for uh, quick access to information. And so that technology suggests um, the increasing importance of short writing as a craft. Um, now, what's interesting to me is that, and the book reveals this, is that short writing has always been an important form of expression uh, in, I think, all cultures, I, uh, but certainly Western culture. And um, the many examples of powerful and interesting short writing that exist over uh, the centuries uh, suggest that there's a really interesting connection between traditional forms of expression um, of the ways in which we use short writing and the evolving ones that, in, that uh, involve new technology. So in my experience, writing this book was an opportunity to build a bridge between the past and the future in terms of how um, we would get some of our best work done. What, what, what's the primary quality of, of, of short writing? I mean, it's, it's obvious that, that it tends, it seems that tech, the copy is, is read more often or more thoroughly if it's short. But can, can, you, can, you, can you identify the, the main reason why we should write short? What, what's, the, what's the value, what's the benefit of, of short writing? Uh, primarily? Well, the, um, I think there are four. I was going to say three reasons. I was going to say three, but I think I'm going to add a fourth. Okay. okay. So the first thing that short writing does is that it captures focus more than any other style of writing. If, if I ask you... Um, what Shakespeare's play Hamlet is about. Uh, I picked one that's set in Denmark, by, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's about many things. It's, a, it's about many, many things, and it has very complicated themes. But if, I, if we would look, look at, at one of Shakespeare's sonnets, one of his 14-line poems, and we could say, well, what's that about? Very often it's about one sharp thing. So short writing is the best way, in a sense, to make your point and to clear all the unessential elements out of it. Okay. The second thing about short writing is it has focus. It has this quality, um, which I'm going to explain, called wit. W-I-T. Hmm. And I don't mean uh, humor, although that's one way in which it's used, but wit meaning in, a, in the uh, traditional sense of um, a governing intelligence that you can really see in short writing what the writer is trying to do. It has a purpose, a logic, a point to it that you can connect direct, directly to the intent of the writer. The third thing that short writing allows you to do is, that, is a quality that I'll call um, polish, P-O-L-I-S-H, not Polish, polish. <laughs> okay. uh, meaning that writers, when they write short, um, they're more likely to... Um, to shine it, make it shine, to, mm -hmm. to, to create a kind of, uh, uh, make sure that there's no rough edges. 
And um, that's not a quality that you find in long form journalism. So I, I like to say, um, you know, when I read long form journalism, even good long form journalism, I can always find things I would like to cut out, but not in good short form journalism. By definition, it includes only the essential elements. And I think the fourth one is that um, short writing is more memorable. Uh, because it, um, it has fewer extra parts, um, we can remember the essential message. Um, that's why we can, for example, why I know the lyrics of so many songs. Not just because I've heard them, but because um, um, unless you get to Bob Dylan, you know, they tend to be, um, uh, <laughs> to be short. But even with Bob Dylan, you know, once upon a time, fine, through the bums a dime in my prime, didn't you? You know, it's, you have this, this sense of, of you can carry short writing away from the page and pass it along to somebody else. Thank you. Okay. Forgive me, but your, your answers are very long. Can we extend it a few minutes? Sure, as long as you want. Well, not as long as you want, but before. Yeah, I'm, I'm, on, a, on a time frame of 15 to 20 minutes, but you give so, uh, uh, I'm just astonished, the, the eloquence and the preciseness, it's interesting. Very good. Uh, can we, can we, can you identify, I think I, I posted this question in, in my email. C can you give me the, the primary tool or the primary recommendation on how to write short? Because it's, We, we've seen um, a lot of uh, a lot of you know how that we should we should do, how do we do it in in, in, in the real world what what, what is the, your main maybe maybe one or two or three recommendations yeah. we, we 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 talked about we use your um, some many of your recommendations from the book but if you now point them or uh, tell them to us what 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 would, would they be uh, let me give you two strategies that that um that seem to stand apart. Okay. Okay. So the first one has to do with the order of words. And so the, the strategy says order words for emphasis. You put, you have a series of words, maybe there's only six or seven of them, but it depends on the order of the words whether the message is effective. So anybody, um, um, anybody who, who tells a joke knows that the order of the words is important and that probably the thing that makes you laugh will come near the end. Okay? And so the same is true for many other forms of expression. I like to use a Shakespeare quote as an example. So in the play Macbeth, um, someone comes in and tells the king, he, he says, sends a message, the queen, my lord, is dead. And what I think... Is, is telling about that sentence is that the most important words come at the beginning, queen, and at the end, dead. And the least important word, my lord, is tucked in the middle. The queen, my lord, is dead. If the messenger had said, the queen is dead, my lord, um, he would not have taken advantage of the end of the sentence as that place where you, you deliver the key word. Hmm. And so when I'm writing for Twitter, uh, one of the reasons I think, I, I think that I've been able to develop a style of short writing for Twitter and Facebook is because I'm very, very conscious that I have 
just a few words to work with. But even there, I'm going to build to something. I'm going to put something at the beginning that interests you. But at the end, next to the period, I'm going to put something that sticks out that you're going to remember. So emphatic word order. This is hard for journalists only because journalism is so front-loaded. We think that the beginnings of things are so important. Mm -hmm. But to balance that, especially in, uh, in a, let's say, um, in a summary of a story that's only uh, 20 words, to make sure, I think I call it in the book, a target, hitting your target, okay. where, mm -hmm. you know, the arrow travels from the first word and then hits the target at the end. And I think this works in Danish as well, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, I, I have, I've, I've had this conversation with Danes, and, and it says, yes, this is a strategy that works um, better in some languages than others, but uh, that is effective. So that's, that, that would be one of the strategies. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a second one. Uh, can I give that one now? now? Can I, I share can. that now? Please. Okay. So, in short writing, especially where there's, let's say, two elements, um, it really helps if there's some tension between the two elements. So uh, a lot of people are attracted to one of my books, which is called The Glamour of Grammar. And those two words rhyme, glamour and grammar. And at one time in the history of the English language, they were actually more connected. But when most people hear it, they kind of laugh because they think of glamour as... Angelina Jolie, right? Okay. Or Sophia Loren or Marilyn Monroe. Um, but when they hear grammar, they think of um, a grumpy old uh, school teacher. <laughs> and so, so, so to get people to sort of think about gra uh, grammar in a new way, I put these words together that don't belong together. Uh, there was a television, a popular television show in the 1990s. Um, you still see it sometimes call, called uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And um, what, what people think was odd and interesting about that title was that usually the Vampire Slayer is a German professor, like named... Von Helsing. But here, it's the name of a 16-year-old California high school girl who is the savior of the universe. Those two things don't belong together. They kind of bump into each other. And I now think this is true in all forms of expression, in music, in dance, in the, the visual arts. A good photograph compelling photograph. I saw one. It had a Japanese sumo wrestler holding a little baby who was wearing a diaper. And it looked like they were both wearing diapers, but <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the, the huge wrestler and the tiny baby and the tension between the two. Yeah. So if you begin with emphatic word order and then look for points of tension, a little, little rub, a little friction, um, that, I think, attracts people um, in lots of ways. Yeah. We, we have a, a long discussion at this, at this seminar about is there a contradiction be between long and short writing? I mean, in terms of the length of articles, in terms of the length of information copy on the Internet, um, is it both or is it either or? So um, I've been arguing in the last few years 
that if I were hiring a writer now, a reporter, to work for me, um, that versatility would be an important virtue. So I, w I want a writer who is able to write slowly and long, in long form. And I, I want that same writer to be able to write quickly and in short form. So for me, it's a matter of um, multiple purposes, multiple audiences, mm. multiple platforms. Um, I want to give you an example. Please. So about a year ago, I wrote an essay for the New York Times um, about the power of the short sentence. When people hear a short sentence or read a short sentence, they treat it as if it's the gospel truth. There's a sort of, a, it carries the weight, uh, it, it has the ring of truth to it. So the version I wrote was 1,200 words long, and that appeared on the New York Times website. But that was too long for the, the newspaper, the actual page of the newspaper. Okay. So I wanted it to appear in the newspaper as well. So I talked to the editor, and she said, can you give me a 600-word version? I said, yes, I can. So I gave her a 1,200-word version that appeared on the website, gave her a 600-word version that appeared um, in the newspaper. Um, for the Pointer blog, I did a 300-word version. And then for Facebook and Twitter, uh, I did a 140-character uh, uh, version. Actually, with Twitter, what I did was uh, I wrote three or four different tweets, which captured very different aspects. So, like, even a very, very long novel, even a novel of a thousand words can have a title, which is War and Peace. So, even in our traditional forms of journalism, we know that there have always been short forms that are um, very, very important to the task of communicating the news. The headline, the subheadline, the summary. Um, I don't know what you call it the, the, with a photograph, like a caption or a description yes. Yes. photograph. Politics. Okay, there you go. So... Um, this is, um, so, so for, in my purposes, um, I'm, I'm rarely choosing, uh, so, so I rarely uh, think of writing in terms of right and wrong. Uh, I, I think of it in terms of what's the best way for expressing what I want to say for the audience that needs to hear it. And <clears throat> now I have many different tools yes. with which I can do that. Sure. And look, uh, and part of this, I should say, I wrote a book <laughs> about short writing, uh, which people think is a contradiction, <laughs> since yes. the book is usually long. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, but in fact, uh, it's the shorter ver um, uh, shorter forms of writing that sometimes grow into bigger things. And uh, that's the way I tend to write books, is that today um, I'm going to be working on a chapter for a book, but if I write one page a day, at the end of a year I'll have a book. And, and almost no one writes a book a year. So um, that's the way I kind of um, think of these two, these different forms of writing and language as being in harmony rather than in conflict with each other.